dear children welcome to form 7 chemistry second term today we are going to learn organic synthesis it is from unit 5 topic 20 here is the content for you children it is the lesson number 20 from unit 5 and the student book references page 260 to 277 and the specification reference is 20.1 to 20.5 here is the content so first of all introduction of the several reactions in organic chemistry and their functional groups and how to extend a carbon chain and then chiral synthesis that is introduction and the nucleophilic addition and nucleophilic substitution and then synthetic methods so here are the learning objectives you will be able to deduce the characteristic reactions of functional groups and you will be able to understand the methods of increasing the length of the carbon chain in a molecule to uh, form grignard reagents and be able to predict the properties of unfamiliar compounds and be able to plan reaction schemes recalling familiar reactions and then you will be able to use knowledge of organic chemistry in selecting suitable practical procedures okay here is the organic synthesis and its definition a synthesis involves the preparation of new compounds from others children there are several industries which involve in preparing several organic compounds from other functional groups but the making or manufacturing or producing these organic compounds is not that easy they have to consider several key points and they have to take the risk right so the following are the key points they have to consider right so when planning a synthetic route chemists must consider the reagents required to convert one functional group into another so the presence of other functional groups sometimes you know some of the functional groups also react during the reaction so which is not a good sign right so they have to consider these points right understood children and children in organic synthesis there are other key points that the chemists have to consider right so one is that uh, conditions the temperature and pressure and the catalyst they use and the speed of the reaction right and then the amount of product they uh, get that means the yield we say specially important where in equilibrium reactions and one most important thing is atom economy that means there shouldn't be any wastage so they should get the higher percent of atom economy and then you know the safety rules also they have to follow especially the toxicity of flammability of reactants and products which is not good for the uh, even in the industry and even to the environment okay so they have to take a very great care and then the financial economy the cost of chemicals especially uh, the reactants or the product uh, I mean a product okay of course they can decide okay and then they have to decide the price as per the demand for product and then problems of purification right so the pure samples right they can uh, check uh, look into this aspect as well the product should be pure right somewhat pure right possibility of optically active products so this is the one uh, uh, mean aspect we are going to look at in the uh, slides that follow this like optical isomers right okay children in this organic synthesis you all are learning whatever you have learned in previous classes and so far right about all the functional groups and their formula and all the reactions of organic compounds right so here are some functional groups that are alkene hydroxyl and up to esters right you know those functional group formula right so here are the their formulas of functional groups right cx is x belongs to any fluorine chlorine bromine or iodine right and then you know that nitrile compound nitrile functional group is like a c n triple bond and then ester is c o o r children one thing i want to tell you throughout this presentation you are going to see only the revision of whatever 
the lessons you have learned right whatever topics you have learned so far right you will come across only the revision nothing new in this presentation so organic synthesis is all about the revision of all the topics what we have covered so far right okay children right here so the preparation of new compounds right about uh this compounds only we are going to learn that is from alkene to how you prepare alkane and what are the conditions needed and what is the catalyst we are using and then the conditions like temperature and pressure or if there are any special conditions needed or any oxidizing or reducing agent is needed everything is mentioned in this slide okay you can go through this slide uh, leisurely right so here almost all the reactions are mentioned here whatever we have learned so far right everything even the acylation alkylation and from acyl chloride how you prepare primary and secondary amides so these are the only right so the previous topic we have learned right and then how we prepare esters from acyl chlorides and in once again from esters to carboxylic acids that means reduction everything you have children in this right it's a summary of all the reaction processes understood children yes next how do we extend a carbon chain during which reaction you think a compound extends its carbon chain can any guesses yes right especially the haloalkanes and carbonyl compounds and the aromatic rings when you have a substitution or a, a cyanide species when it attacks a carbon compound right on a, on an organic compound then its carbon chain increases right especially the cyanide compound is potassium cyanide so the reagent what we find is aqueous alcoholic potassium cyanide right or sodium cyanide also you can use and what are the conditions needed reflux in aqueous and alcoholic solution and then what is the product we are getting nitrite right so what do we call this process it is called nucleophilic right reaction so nucleophilic what is it yes nucleophile attacks the carbon compound and the product will be nitrate so here is the equation bromoethane right is being attacked by a cyanide ion species right and then in the products we get what do we get propane nitrile right understood okay and then the by product is potassium bromide understood children yes you have seen this reaction in the previous topic very good so as we have seen in the previous slide how the cyanide species attacks right here is a 3d diagram to explain that right you know the mechanism already you have seen in the previous lesson right so this is how a cyanide species attacks and before that uh, carbon halogen bond is breaking so there are two things involved in the rate determining step that also you have to consider children and then you know that cyanide species is substituting a halogen species so because of that you will get another carbon in the product right excess carbon right so there are three carbons in the product so has and uh, the carbon chain extended got extended yes so previously it was yes c2h5br now it has c3h5m so there are three carb uh, carbons in the product right propane nitrile we call so extends the carbon chain by one carbon atom and the cn group can be converted to carboxylic acids or amines by the further reactions when uh, c2 h5cn reacts with water we get the carboxylic acid and ammonia as the by product and if it reacts with the reducing agent what is the most popular reducing agent we use yes lithium aluminum tetrahydride right so we get what is it right yeah propane amine right okay so that's about the reactions of c2h5 br and then uh, uh, propane nitrile okay children 
and now we will see the second type that is nucleophilic addition right of carbonyl compounds so before the reaction starts itself i have given you a uh, you know, warning that is highly toxic take great care so these reactions are highly toxic you have to take a very good care right and then so these are the conditions what is the reagent same potassium cyanide but it should be acidified followed by dilute acid and the conditions as you know it is reflux right children this reaction too you have seen in the previous lessons right so what is the product we get hydroxy nitrile right which we call cyanohydrate and then here we have an aldehyde and then hcn gives to hydroxy propane nitrile so hcn is a weak acid and has a difficulty dissociating into ions so because of this we have to add kcn also so that the ionization will be productive and better yes right using ionic kcn produces more of the nucleophile cn minus okay and what is there any other alternative reagent yes hcn catalyzed by alkali which shifts the above equilibrium in favor of cn minus which means we can use the catalyst catalyzed hcn okay children understood yes right so this nucleophilic addition continues right so mechanism is nucleophilic addition and here is a reaction mechanism diagram how the cn minus uh, attacks the carbo like a carbon oxygen double bond first of all it breaks and then carbo cation is attacked by the cn minus and then you know what happens the hydrogen is being sorry oxygen is being highly electronegative seeks the positive hydrogen it bonds with the hydrogen and it becomes oh so that means so the final product what we get is what what do you think is that can anyone give me the uh, name of this compound right okay what is happening in step one okay guess 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 what do you call this ccl ch3 yes okay in step one what is forming cn minus acts as a nucleophile and attacks the slightly positive carbon one of the carbon oxygen bonds break a pair of electrons goes into the oxygen right in step two what is happening a pair of electrons is used to form a bond with h plus overall there has been addition of hcl right so what do you call that it is a yes it is a alcohol which alcohol is that yes that is a nitrile alcohol right okay okay children children you have seen about the two friedel crafts reactions of benzene in the previous lesson that is alkylation and acylation here once again we can look at the alkylation like revision right so what are the reagents we use a halogenoalkane and anhydrous aluminum chloride being added to a benzene and then what's the product you get yes ethyl benzene if you add chloroethane right so and the by product is hydrogen chloride okay children what is the electrophile in this reaction a carbo cation it could be ch3 plus or ethyl plus anything right and here is the mechanism you can see how ethyl uh, you know carbo uh, in a electrophile is being added right to the benzene okay and final product is ethyl benzene okay and then there is a general uh, key point you have to consider a catalyst is used to increase the positive nature of the electrophile and make it better at attacking benzene rings so if you use the catalyst it increases or enhances the positive nature of a electrophile and it would attack benzene ring in a better way so aluminum chloride acts as a lewis acid and helps break the ccl bond so this also you have learned before right okay children so here is the second friedel crafts reaction that is acylation so here we are using acyl chloride right generally they end up with the uh, uh, noyl right that's the functional group right oil oil we call right so an acyl chloride and anhydrous aluminum chloride are the reagents and the conditions are 
as usual reflux but the temperature should be 50 degree celsius and dry inert solvent which is the most common ether ether is epoxy ether as you all know and what is the electrophile here it is not only alkyl species especially an alkyl species we, i mean uh, which is having oxygen connected to it that is co double bond should be present in an uh, attached to the an alkyl chain ch3 co plus or uh, uh, any ethyl co plus like that okay children and then as usual you know you have to add a uh, acyl chloride to benzene and you know you get so methanoyl benzene and hydrogen chloride as the byproduct right you have seen this reaction as well before so a carbonyl compound right aldehyde or ketone is the final product right so mechanism is here you can see how an electrophile is being added to a benzene and forming as a what is it ethanoyl benzene okay right ch3 co right children this is about the acylation reaction okay so now chiral synthesis this also we have seen in which topic yes chiral chemistry that is optical isomerism very good so in chiral synthesis what do we notice about optical isomers pharmaceutical synthesis often requires the production of just the just one optical isomer this is because why one optical isomer usually works better than the other and the other optical isomer may cause dangerous side effects right and then laboratory reactions usually produce both optical isomers children about this optical isomers and how they produce the enantiomers we have learnt in which lesson chirality yes we learnt in chirality that is the last lesson of unit 4 that means lesson number yeah 15 okay so naturally occurring reactions usually produce just one optical isomer right okay we will see further about chiral synthesis in the next slide right so the chiral synthesis you have seen this reaction children aldehydes and ketones undergo nucleophilic addition with cyanide ions right and then this also we have seen in the previous slide two hydroxy propane nitride right so problem is here the carbon oxygen bond is polar we learnt it in chirality if you see the video you will uh, once again you will remember right carbon oxygen double bond is polar and then uh, i mean it's a planar right the nucleophile can attack from above and below right okay so generally it is uh, uh, being a planar uh, species carbon oxygen double bond so the nucleophile can attack from above and below so from above if it attacks one product from below another product so there is an equal chance of each possibility that is 50 50 to form the both enantiomers right a mixture of optically active isomers is produced right you have seen that only occurs if different groups are attached to the co double bond right we will see this mechanism once again so here you can see this how cn minus attacks from above right and cn minus attacks from below right so these two are what mirror images yes so which we call enantiomers right optically isomer right optical isomers okay right once again chiral synthesis continues right so we are uh, you can see this in a reaction mechanism right both attacking from above and below and both mirror images forming and there is an animation for you children of chiral synthesis you can uh, watch a bit so here how the cn minus attacks and then how the enantiomers form right so here is attacking from yeah below okay yes 
yes okay that's how the reaction mechanism happens okay children now you understood better i suppose right yes okay once again the chiral synthesis right what are the consequences of this chiral synthesis isomers have to be separated to obtain the effective one and separation can be expensive and complicated right and the non separation leads to what do you think if you don't separate it right larger doses are needed and possible dangerous side effects and then there will be some legal actions also on the pharmaceutical companies right okay so what is the solution for this so we have to use the natural chiral molecules because they produce only one product right and then use stereo selective reactions which give only one isomer this is also another option and then another solution is use catalyst which give a specific isomer right and then you know biological enzymes or bacteria which are stereo selective so these are the only solutions to avoid the uh, avoid these certain problems right in chiral synthesis to avoid two products producing two products right so nucleophilic substitution we will look at this how it attacks look at this children can any cases can anyone tell me what is this is it sn1 or sn2 mechanism okay what is it yes there are two possible mechanisms sn2 right this produces just one optical isomer with reversed optical activity so it is called sn2 because two species are involved in the rate determining steps what are those two species look at this here cbr is uh, or uh, c and uh, halogen carbon and halogen bond is breaking at the same time another nucleophile is getting substituted both are happening in one step so that's why we call sn2 mechanism both species are involved in the rate determining step right okay children you have seen this before and here is the sn1 mechanism once again you know the problem about sn1 mechanism some of the sn1 mechanism produces two products which are optical isomers so here because in the rate determining step only one species is involved okay look at that right as soon as this yeah nucleophile joins so the c and carbon and halogen bond breaks and it gets separated and the attack can happen from above or below so the two products will form two optical isomers will form okay children hope you understood better about this optical isomers now right this is called greener reagent so this is the new term for you what is a greener reagent a greener reagent has a formula r mgx where x is a halogen and r is an alkyl or aryl benzene ring okay so the preparation so here r mgx means mg is a magnesium you know that right r is an alkyl group and x is a halogen so how do we prepare the greener reagent <coughs> so the greener uh, children e even though it has the spelling like grignard but it is pronounced as greener once again greener reagent okay so this greener reagents are made by adding the halogen alkane to small bits of magnesium in a flask containing what do you call this ethoxy ethane yes ether right so the flask is fitted with a reflux condenser and the mixture is warmed over a water bath for about 20 to 30 minutes and you have now the greener reagent we will see about this condenser and everything in the uh, slides that follow this right so this is the reaction right so here is ethoxy ethane that is called ether right so what we have is that ch3ch2mgbr right what do you call that greener reagent this is what we use in the reactions right so here are the greener reactions what are the greener reactions how many reactions of greener we have 
so an organometallic chemical reaction in which alkyl or vinyl or aryl magnesium halides add to a carbonyl group in an aldehyde or a ketone okay when this greener reagent is being added to a carbon uh, uh, i mean uh, organic compound called aldehyde or a ketone right what are the products we get we will see right so number one with carbon dioxide if a greener reagent reacts with carbon dioxide what do we get yes carboxylic acid right so carbon dioxide with the greener reagent produces carboxylic acid and with the methanol this is an aldehyde the first aldehyde with methanol if a greener reagent reacts with methanol what do we get very good primary alcohol and if the green greener reagent reacts with any other aldehydes other than the primary uh, i mean other than the methanol what do we get so we get the secondary alcohol okay that means other than the methanol any other aldehyde we get the secondary alcohol and then the same greener reagent if it reacts with the ketone we get the tertiary alcohol okay children these are the only four reactions which are new to you and then you have to remember other than this every other thing everything else is already you have learned before okay children right okay and here are the different uh, practical techniques with the diagrams these two you have learned before and you have seen them in the form classes right okay so one is the heating under reflux you know the condenser is placed uh, vertical on a round bottom flask and then the mixture is being heated and it's always advisable if you add the anti bumping bumping granules to the flask for the better and the uniform heating right here only the if you want only the one product as a final you can use always this heating under the flux okay the best example what we can prepare an ester from an alcohol and a carboxylic acid and you know we have to add a few drops of sulfuric acid right so this two we have seen before and there are methods of separation we have seen this simple distillation where you can get the pure sample of the pure distillate from the mixture right you need only the round bottom flask and the condenser where the water in and water out or uh, there are two vents they are outlets right one is uh, water in and other one is water out and thermometer is placed so this is not a new thing for you you have seen about this simple distillation apparatus before okay children next you know fractional distillation where it is uh, similar to simple distillation but only thing is that you have to attach the fractionating column to round bottom flask and then remember the condenser is fixed to the fractionating column not to the flask okay and the thermometer should be placed in the fractionating column and remember one key point the uh, yeah tip of the thermometer where right the bulb should be uh, at least closer to the mouth or opening of the condenser understood that is the only point you have to remember when you are drawing the fractional distillation apparatus okay children right so this uh, technique works only when there are uh, two or three substances mixed together and all three or two have the different boiling temperatures you have learned it in o levels right and then there is another one that's called filtration under reduced pressure so this is the new uh, apparatus which you have not seen before the same thing like these two are called bushner funnel and bushner uh, i mean uh, funnel right and bushner flask okay so here the bushner funnel is uh, the shape is bit uh, wide mouth it has and then large enough to particles to contain right and then there is a moist and filter paper and then you have to place a porous plate with the holes in it then only it can work under reduced pressure and bushner flask has a side arm tube so we call it a rubber tubing is attached we can attach to that so sometimes they, we call it the side arm flask and then or else we can use bushner flask 
okay so here is the uh, live uh, apparatus like you know so Bushner flask and a Bushner funnel okay children right so this is another way of separating uh, you know substances from a mixture so that's about the presentation here is the summary okay organic synthesis we know there are different techniques uh, where we prepare the new compounds hydrolysis elimination alkylation and acylation esterification etc and already you know a greener reagent has a formula r m g x where the x is a halogen and r is a alkyl group and then we have seen about sn1 and sn2 mechanisms especially sn1 mechanism involves one species attacking in two ways right and then resulting in optical isomers and then there are practical techniques right heating under reflux and the separation method simple distillation fractional distillation and Bushnell funnel and flask under reduced pressure right and here is an exercise for you children all the reaction mechanisms and the reaction processes are numbered from 1 to 27 so you have to name and uh, write the processes right okay children think and answer this right okay so this is going to be a good revision if you answer all this okay children so the end of the presentation hope you have learned about all the organic processes and mechanisms in this lesson children so thank you for listening and stay stay safe and uh, take care thank you